Hello and welcome to Read the World. My name is Derek Maine and I review translated literature. So today is going to be the last of my BTBA reviews. So Best Translated Book Award and the one that I selected um, today is actually on the short list. So this is Good Will Come From The Sea and it is um, from Greece, Christos Ikemomu. Ikonomu, I think that second one's a little better, although still terrible. Translated from the Greek by Karen Emmerich, and this is Archipelago Books. So, one thing that, right off the bat, a little different for me, this is a story collection. I was going to call it a short story, but they're not all that short. There's four of them, I believe. Yes, I'll Swallow Your Dreams, Kill the German, Good Will Come from the Sea, and Kites in July. Now, I normally don't review and I normally don't read that many short story collections, which, I don't know, this prompted some questions before, but I just, uh, I, I'm, I'm, one, I'm dorky, right? Like, I'm into the novel, even novellas, and I love novellas. I mean, but I, for whatever reason, like, I just like the novel. Well, this works because it could easily be called a novel. Yes, the characters are different in those four stories, but I mean, it, it, they are connected thematically 100%, um, it, tonally and atmospherically 100%. I mean, it it really feels uh, like a complete work and that these stories belong together, it, that it's purposeful. That's typically my issue with short story collections is that like, I'll read a short story and I'm like, okay, I like the short story, you know, but um, then the next one, it's like, all right, well, this one was 30 years before, 15 years before, and it was printed in this magazine and, and, and they're just disconnected and, and they're, you know, their collection of works. And I have those and sometimes I'll pull them off the shelf, like definitely to like, you know, read a Flannery O'Connor story or something, but like, you know, Raymond Carver, I mean, these, I mean, there, there's people I love, like, don't get me wrong. I mean, Borges. But it's not something I typically review or like spend a lot of time reading because well, they're short stories. And it's just not like I love the novel. But this is different and I think it can be called a novel. So good will come from the sea. That phrase, yes, that's the name of one of the stories, but also like it, it keeps, it's said in every one of the stories in kind of different ways. And I'm gonna read, I'm gonna talk about five different quick sections, but to give you an overview, this is a response to, I, I mean, the austerity that happened in Greece, the attitude towards foreigners that happened, not just in Greece, but now across the whole world, right? And so it, it, this is a really relevant, timely, angry book. Um, I liked it a lot. I, I'm a little surprised to find it in the finalist for BTBA. I think it's a good book, very, bordering on very good, okay? B but I think it might be more there because of the thematic quality, because the thematic quality, especially politically, is very strong and it's very relevant, okay? Um, and the writing's great. Like, I'm not all bashing the writing. It's just that there, there isn't m much that... Uh, that occurs like it, it kind of is um, a, a little bit more philosophical in, in terms of like ranty at times and things like that as opposed to a, a propelled forward story and like you compare it to my last well let's compare it to to tentacle okay i think that's like kind of an interesting comparison because that was uh didn't make the short list but tentacle by rita indiana deals with a lot of current political issues, but it deals with it through the story itself, like the tale, T-A-L-E, right? The tale like unwinds some of those things and give you stuff to think about. These are more commonly going to be two to four people talking or a narrator complaining in, in, and less of a story. I mean, a couple of stories definitely happen, but they're, they're not the main focus. Okay. Like, and, and so I think that I just prefer the 
the former, right? Like I just prefer something that has like that story element. I mean, 77, the last review, again, a BTBA finalist, that one, uh, it doesn't deal as aggressively with, you know, modern themes because it's called 77 and, and it's about Buenos Aires in 77. But certainly like your complicity in any sort of um, tyrannical setting is always relevant, okay? So, but, but even that, like it's told within a story, like the, a framework, do you know what I mean? Um, and, and that brings me back to saying, that's also one of the things I really like about Good Will Come From The Sea is that the raw anger is really there. I mean, this is contemporary, as in like contemporaneous. It feels like it was written uh, you, you know, for this moment, of this moment, and it, and it was, you know, and it's a true raw reaction. So it doesn't have that uh, gift of time passage that other works have where you can kind of study it. You sort of just need to like seep this into you. So let me go with some, um, some quick sections. So page 19, I wrote down, learn to take it. Though we all agree that this day, these days, with this country in the gutter, a real man, a hero, isn't the guy who fights evil, but the guy who learns to live with it. And that's a hint of the bleakness that you're going to get here because uh, there's no heroes anymore. The hero is not anyone who fights against the system. The hero is not anyone that tries to take anything. The hero is the one that learns to live with it. That's gross. It sucks, right? <laughs> I mean, not as writing, but like as a truth. Uh, page 57. Same themes. And, and the themes are sort of similar throughout. Good will come from the sea, Tasso said. Shut up, man, I said. I mean, didn't you hear? What? Good broke down. They took it in for repairs. It's going to be a while before they can get it up and running. At least a hundred years, they say. I just like that. Good broke down. They took it in for repairs. I mean, this it's unrepentant. The, these stories are unrepentant in saying, listen, th this is the state of life today, and it's awful, and it's because of people, and people can't change it. We'll get into that. Actually, next next section, page 110, this talks about that. Can people change it? Like, is there a way out of this misery? The world is constructed in such a way as to deprive each of us of the possibility of doing any personal good. No, that's not right. Let's take it from the top. Ready? Okay. The world is constructed in such a way as to relieve each of us of the responsibility of doing any personal good. We're all free to do bad in a thousand ways, but good is always someone else's affair. In our societies, the state has a monopoly on good. In order for society to function even in the most basic way, the state has to have a monopoly on violence. But even more critical is for the state to have a monopoly on good. Do you see what I'm talking about, about the philosophy? There's a ton to unpack there. I don't even philosophically agree with that statement. Of course, the state has to have a monopoly on violence. I mean, that's, yes, that's true. I don't believe the state has to have a monopoly on good, and I do believe that collection action, collective action can be effective, and I think it will be effective. But that's neither here nor there. That's not, that, that's a personal opinion. This is the story, and, and this story is one of unrepentant people have hated each other, hurt each other, and, and we now live um, amidst that pain. But I, I thought that was really good. Like each of us, uh, you know, the world's constructed in such a way as to deprive each of us of the possibility of doing any personal good. And then he kind of scratches that. He goes back, no, 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 no. It relieves each of us of the responsibility of doing any personal good. And the world can absolutely do that in a hundred ways. And it's true that you're free to do bad in a thousand ways. So bleak, but really cool section. Page 218. So foreigners is a huge concept in this, in these stories. Specifically, actually, it's not even out of country foreigners. Like this has to do with people within Greece coming to this area by the sea, to this island. Um, so it deals with foreigners in, 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 in that way. I mean, it talks about anyone not being like from the very land that they are, 
um, physically standing on as being a foreigner. Don't fool. And, and so this right here uh, is some someone talking to um, a woman who wants to open up like a little, uh, I think like a little restaurant by the sea or whatever. They got a great space and they're a little naive about how that might work. Don't fool yourself, girl. It's not 1990 anymore or even 2000. It's a war zone out there. It's life or death. The fewer of us there are, the better. The guy next door isn't going to let you just waltz over and grab the food off his plate. Look at what's happening around you. You think the locals are all just thrilled we've shown up here? They're at each other's throats as it is. You think they're going to welcome us with open arms? I mean, why do you think they call us foreigners? You think that's a good sign? So, uh, very relevant, obviously, in kind of showing like, well, I mean, the people that are here and the people that have been here um, have been deprived of opportunity. You know, capital and, and the structures that exist uh, ha have taken away, you know what I mean, from from regular people. And so when anyone new kind of comes in, um, unfortunately, a lot of that uh, negativity, that hatred, and that pain is going to be fostered upon these new people and not the systems of oppression which have caused the circumstances. Okay? Kind of interesting. Last one, page 48 on language. And this was a little different than most of the philosophizing that goes on in this book, but because I'm a lover of language, words, whatever, um, I actually think this was probably my favorite little bit. Um, what he's talking about is, because uh, I don't want to read this whole thing, but he's talking about how they've, they've come up with this new language basically called shitless, you know, uh, instead of speaking English or Swedish, it's because it's it's all cursing. It's all women and children curse. It's kind of about the foulness of, of the way they interact. What I mean is, if you get used to calling all women whores and all men assholes and all children brats, you slowly begin to believe that's how it really is, that all women are whores, all men are assholes, all children are brats. And I don't think it makes any difference if you believe that your own wife isn't a whore, or your own kids aren't brats, or you yourself aren't an asshole. No difference at all. Not a bit. Not one bit. And I really like that. I think that that uh, actually encapsulates a lot of what goes on today when it comes to the sort of ideas that may begin in a small community. Think of like 4chan or Reddit, and then um, they move on to like meme culture, and then Twitter, right? And it's this really dark, trollish language um, that's awful towards other people. And then, you know, very, very shortly, like the president of the United States is like endorsing it and retweeting it and in fact winning office on it, you know? So these ideas and this language like expands and spreads. And I like that last part about it doesn't matter. It, it, like it starts off as just words, okay? But if you keep repeating that like a mantra, and if that becomes sort of your um, everyday way of interacting with the world, then it becomes a truth. And it doesn't matter if you think you might be exempt from that and your family is fine, not my daughter or not my wife and stuff like that, because you're still going to treat others that way. And once people start treating others that way, well, it's the domino effect, like do unto others. I mean, there's a reason that, 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 sentiment is in every religion. I mean, whatever you believe or don't believe, like, it's a decent philosophy, like, treat other people, like, pretty good or whatever, you know? Like, I always end this show with the same thing. You have the same thing, just as, be good to folks.